After an eight-hour flight, Alexis and I landed in Paris. We met up with our friends and took a bus to a rural part of France in the Loire Valley. Friends of ours were getting married at a place called Chateau Chalon. If I'm being honest, I didn't research our destination prior to arrival. The bride and groom, while they are friends of mine now, they have a much longer history with Alexis. I agreed to go on the trip, I packed my bags, and I just waited for this part of the adventure to unfold. When I heard Chateau, I pictured a small vineyard in the French countryside with quaint cottages. What awaited us was anything but quaint. The night of arrival, we checked into our room and made our way back to the wedding site for the first of our epic dinners. Alexis and others indulged in champagne and then we went back to some much needed rest. I was so exhausted and ready for bed that I didn't have the mental capacity to worry about whether or not I was missing out on some sort of experience by remaining sober. I woke up the next morning, went for a run, and then explored the tiny town near where we were staying. Going quick. I'm being serious. Okay, goodbye. I showered and hopped back onto the bus that took us between the two locations. I knew we were going to a lunch and assumed that there would be wine, but I didn't know that there was going to be a winemaker pouring wine from his personal vineyard at lunch. With a lens and a camera body fashioned around your neck, you were given permission to be a fly on the wall. You get to stand and observe conversations in a way that would normally be seen as odd or even rude. I knew Alexis was having the time of her life. I felt like I could enjoy the experience through her. I knew that if I were standing next to her while wine was being poured, she might have been worried about me. Maybe not. But I didn't want to risk being a burden or even worse, a curmudgeon, during her once-in-a-lifetime experience. So I sunk into full documentarian mode. To be honest, at times, I felt like I had done something wrong. Is it my fault I can't seem to enjoy this moment like everyone else? Then I noticed the children. They were having uninhibited fun. They weren't worried about drinking or not drinking. I wanted to conjure their spirit, but maybe I'm too far gone. I've gone down this path and I can't go back. In this moment, I wanted so badly to be exuberant like a child. Maybe that's my ego thinking. Is that fear? Fear that the other adults will wonder why this sober man is dancing like a maniac? Has he lost his mind? I imagine people whispering, that's what happens when you fry your brain. That's definitely my ego. Then I thought, have I ruined joy for myself? Am I being pretentious in this moment? Why can't I seem to connect? Last night during the wedding, I was like, why am I not drinking? I'm in France. Everyone is drinking. Drinking the best wine, the Chardonnay from L'Oreal and the Bordeaux with the name of the bride and the groom on the bottle and the best champagne. When you're near champagne, you drink champagne, everyone kept saying, and people are like, oh, you must have no fun. And Literally now no I'm the only one. That. Now I'm the only one that's not hung over. And I'm like, that is so worth it. So leave a comment at a time where you thought I should drink and then you, you've gotten the next day. And you've realized it was so worth it okay. to make the Do right you decision. Like being the most obnoxious person in France. Yes. Okay. It's part of my French charm. <laughs> After the wedding, we made our way back to Paris via the train. A man retching and getting sick the entire bus ride back to the station was a gift from the gods. That would have been me had I indulged. I've spent the last couple years learning about how alcohol affects the brain, and I'm by no means an expert. But I do know that I've created neural pathways that have dulled, but they are still 
there waiting to be reactivated. I hear their echoes as I start to daydream and romanticize moderation, a world in which I could have a few drinks and then just be done. In Paris, Alexis and I had friends around, but we were on our own trip. We had a room inside the famous Beatnik Hotel. What a weird sequence of events, at least from my perspective. I spent my early 20s romanticizing the life of the Beatniks. Now I'm staying in the same hotel as some of my heroes, but I'm sober. I'm not sure how this makes me feel. Maybe I'm just taking myself too seriously. Am I denying myself an experience because of my self-imposed limitations? The part of the beatnik culture that I romanticized was this pursuit of a higher truth, mindfulness, and a life without limitations. A life in which you explore the depths of your consciousness and the essence of humanity. As I've come to see it, drinking alcohol takes me away from the very thing I was after. When I start drinking, it's all I can think about. When people have asked me, why don't you try moderation? My answer is, I have tried. And at its best, moderation for me just means thinking about drinking constantly in an attempt to not drink as much as I want to. So maybe it actually makes perfect sense that I find myself in this hotel during this season of my life. The road of self-exploration was about to get really bumpy for me. Some of our friends who were in Paris had made reservations as a belated birthday gift to Alexis at one of the best bars in the world. <laughs> Sitting sober at one of the best bars in the world, not partaking, not indulging, I felt like I could literally feel my soul leaving my body. A true disassociative moment where you're watching yourself from above. You were not actually in the moment. You were just trying to get through the moment. The experience Alexis and my friends were having, I would have fondly looked back on if I would have drank and I were still drinking. But to be honest, I actively now avoid this memory. It may seem like a simple indulgent in the moment, but I've thought about it for far too long. For me, it's not take it or leave it. This experience was the most difficult moment out of the last two years. It was an experience where my new identity was completely at odds with my former self. I felt uncertain and insecure about my decision to not drink. I worried if I was ruining the moment. I wondered if I was maybe being arrogant or self-absorbed at the notion that I could ruin someone's time. Then I remember this was a concern in my early days of shifting lifestyles. Would we still be able to have pleasurable experiences together? That was a question that was brought up in my early days of sobriety. It is a valid question, but the answer, it's not certain. The answer flows through time. I've gone through phases where I didn't want to go out and be around people drinking. I have learned now to trust myself the more solid my convictions have grown. I've been trying to learn to let go of any control I want to have over situations. I don't have to be here. I don't have to do this. I want to be in this moment, and I'm okay with it being different. The bar was loud, but I did not notice because my inner dialogue was drowning out the chatter of strangers. Before I knew it, we were out of the bar, moving about the city, about to leave Paris for Barcelona. One thing Alexis and I have in common is that we both had a child in our early 20s. I was in the middle of college pursuing a philosophy degree when I was awarded custody of my one-year-old son. Alexis followed a similar path. She had finished a college degree in Spanish and sidelined her ambitions of traveling to Spain to raise her child. So being with her for such a monumental goal evoked emotions inside of me that are hard to put into words. We were finally in the city of her dreams, speaking the language that she learned so that way she could truly absorb the culture. We explored the city together and had one of the most exceptional dining experiences I've ever had at a restaurant. I was so grateful to have a clear mind. I kept reflecting on how I would have felt exhausted, strung out, and been so much more grumpy about navigating through a foreign city if I were hungover. But as we explored Barcelona, another temptation was on the horizon. Two of my favorite bands were playing at a music festival in the city, and we had tickets and plans to meet up with some other friends. I kept thinking about how I've changed so much 
Prior to having a child, I spent a few summers hopping from festival to festival, living on the fringe of society with a rebel group of degenerates. I despised the idea of becoming a custy, a term my outlaw friends and I used to describe normal people who came to shows. I identified so much with my exploration of psychedelics, my chronic use of cannabis, and my love for craft beer. I can't help but think that my identity during this time was taking me further and further from who I really was. The person whom I aspire to be, who I think I truly am. This person was buried deep inside of a cave built by mounds of regret, anxiety, fear, and a constant desire to escape by numbing myself. I was too afraid to be myself. I was afraid of being rejected by everyone, so I hid from this fear. I muted my true self and its cries for help by escaping. During these last two years, I don't think I've changed. I think I've returned back to who I truly align with.